how to change the cover and the magnet in a PAF style pickup. Coming up. All right, PAF covers and PAF style Alnico magnets. These are two items that the uh, adventurous guitar player may change. And at Throwback, we make both of these. We make a variety of Alnico uh, vintage spec magnets, as well as our own stamped PAF style cover. And in the case of the cover PA, uh, PAF style cover, people may want to switch it for cosmetics or perhaps they want a little thinner cover. Ours are very thin. And we also offer an aged and shiny nickel version of this as well as aged and shiny gold. And um, with a magnet, this is an item that, um, that will immediately change the character of your pickup if you want to switch it out. So because of that, both of these items are commonly, uh, well, a common question I get is how do you switch these? So in the video coming up, I'm going to describe how to do that for both the cover and the magnet. And uh, I'll cover all the variations in different, uh, different styles of pickups. Although PAF pickups is a category, they vary a bit as to how they're constructed based upon the manufacturer, and I'll, I'll cover all those variations so you, you'll have an idea of how to, how to switch these out no matter what pickups you've got. Stick around. Okay, so I've got a prototype pickup here that I'm going to switch the magnet out of. I'm, I'm going to show you how to remove the cover and uh, remove the magnet, put a new one in, I'll also try to show all of the variations that I can think of that cover what you might run into with various brands of pickups. Our, our, our PAF uh, pickup, style pickups are a recreation of a vintage one. We have pull screws through the base, threaded through the base plate, and uh, a, a lot of uh, PAF style pickups don't have that. So depending upon what you have, you may or may not need to follow some other steps. So I'll, c I'll cover all the variations I can think of that you might run into and uh, potential problems. But, and again, before we start this, be aware that we're taking the cover off the pickup. That protects the coils of the pickup. The coils under here will be taped, but since the cover is coming off, this is an opportunity, unfortunately, for the pickup to get damaged. So you want to be extra careful in following these steps, keeping in mind that the coils are protected just by tape once this cover comes off. And um, when switching the magnet, taking the cover off, putting it back on, you want to be aware of that and just proceed cautiously so your pickup does not sustain any damage. So what we're going to do is start with the uh, with undoing these solder joints. These solder joints are holding the cover on, and uh, what I like to do is to flow them with a soldering iron. And the soldering iron I'm using is a WES 5160 watt soldering st station made by Weller. You want to make sure that you have a high enough wattage. And once this is flow, once I reflow the solder joint, I'm going to pass a, a uh, razor blade in between the cover and the base plate here. And that'll free up that solder joint. So I'll do it for both sides. Have to juggle a little bit here to get everything to show up in a video, but let's give it a shot. All right, so this is a little hobby vice with rubber jaws. It's a nice, safe way to handle it. Okay. Let's heat this up. And we'll... There we go. All right, now we'll do the same to the other side. Okay. 
One other thing I should mention with this cover before we take it off, I just thought about this, is um, in case your pickup is wax potted, this, this pickup is not, but if it is wax potted, you're probably going to want to heat up the cover here once, you're, once you have the solder joints freed up because that wax is going to hold the cover on. And uh, you want to heat the cover up a little bit with hair dryer perhaps and soften that wax and that'll, that'll allow you to, to free the cover up. All right, let's get back to it. All right, so this requires just a little bit of persuasion there with a small screwdriver to loosen it up. All right, sometimes you can get solder that flows a little deeper between the uh, cover and the base plate. Uh, and you might have to pry that open just a touch. Not too hard, but once you get that free, gently take this off. Make sure that there aren't any sharp edges of solder here on the cover that might cut into the tape. So that's one thing to be aware of. All right, once we've got the cover off, we're going to switch the magnet. Switching the magnet um, requires, no matter what type of pickup you've got, it's going to require the loosening of these four screws. Because those four screws hold the bobbin the bobbins to the base plate, the bobbins press down on the magnet here. We're going we're to remove that out on the co-magnet. And if you have a pickup that doesn't have pull screws that thread through the base plate, that may be enough to get the magnet to fall out. So let's, and even with the, the pull screws threaded through the base plate, you may have just enough play to get the magnet out that way so but these are threaded so that's unlikely we may probably going to have to back these out to uh, these pole screws out to where they're no longer threat uh, passing through the base plate but we've now loosened those four screws let's see if we can get the magnet to slide out no that's not going to happen we can try some pliers here. No. So let's back these screws out. You can use just a regular flathead screwdriver. I'm going to use a little Dremel driver tool I have here just to speed up the process. Then we're going to pass, we're going to back these out just so they're no longer going through the base plate there. All right, now since the magnet has a charge, this may not just fall out. It's not going to, it's sticking to the, uh, the keeper bar here. So what we need to do is carefully peel back the tape that covers up the solder joint or the, the solder connections within the pickup. Take a small flathead screwdriver, making sure to not touch any of these solder connections here because all of your wiring for the pickup is is in there but you can see the end of the magnet here magnet here to where my uh, screwdriver is touching and if you just give that a push it'll come out now uh, the another important detail with this is what charge this magnet has relative for your pickup. So the conventional uh, way this is done is that the south charge goes towards pole screws, north charge goes towards the slugs. That would be the conventional setup for both the neck and bridge pickup in a PAF style pickup. There are exceptions to that though. An ES-345 or an ES-355, any guitar with a Veritone, we'll have a bridge magnet flipped north. If you have a three pickup Les Paul Custom, the bridge pickup is usually flipped, has a flipped magnet for that as well. 
Uh, and if you're going to do a Peter Green modification, which would be the out of phase middle position tone, it is usually done by flipping the neck pickup magnet so that the screw charge is north rather than south. But in most instances, you're going to have the screw charge south. There are different ways to check that. Sir McDonald makes a little uh, indicator that, uh, that will let you know what the charge is. I use a, a Gauss meter to check it. And right there, south is the orientation for that. I already knew this, but we're going to put the magnet that we're replacing this with in the same way. If our magnets we, we ship labeled south because south is going to be your conventional way to uh, install a magnet for PF style pickup. This magnet has it is sand cast, but the bottom and the uh, keeper bar edge is ground smooth. So depending upon what magnet you have, if, if you have one ground edge, typically you want that towards the keeper bar. But this magnet, south charge, towards the keeper bar, which is, uh, the keeper bar is the bar inside here that the pole screws pass through. So we're going to install that south charge towards the keeper bar and the pole screws. And this is a long Alnico 4 magnet. With a long magnet, you want to slide it in so that the end of the magnet comes just about to the edge of this bobbin on this side. You want to remain, you want there to be a little bit of, of space inside here for the wire connections to tighten back up. So that's about the right spot for putting the magnet in. If it's a short magnet, you can push it in further so about like this, so you can see that it's centered right in the middle. But if you do that too far with a long magnet, you're going to run into trouble getting all these connections to fit back in there. So now, once we've got that back, you can put the tape back over it. And again, you might not have to take this tape off. Depending upon how tight the assembly is, it may just drop out once you get the screws backed out. But for this, we need, to, uh, we need to push it through just a bit. And then you tighten up the brass screws. I have a, a, a torque screwdriver here. It'll make a clicking sound when I get it to the right tension for these. These are delicate screws, and you just want to be careful to snug them up. You don't want to do it too much. Don't want to run the risk of stripping the threads in the plastic or damaging the screw by over tightening it. Once that's done, we can tighten the or put the pole screws back in. Okay, so we've switched out the magnet and we we need to put the cover back on. Uh, perhaps, too, you're just switching the cover. There, so right now there is a choice to be made, and that is, do you want to keep it the vintage spec, which is no uh, sort of wax or anything for the cover, or do you want to do some sort of treatment to reduce the possibility of microphonic feedback from the cover? I personally prefer it with uh, the vintage way which is uh, nothing, no sort of treatment on the cover. And I gig with blues band with this and it never have an issue. But if you're going to have some sort of treatment for it, now is possibly the time to address it. So I'll show you the options with that. One of the simplest ways to reduce cover feedback squeal is to put a piece of tape on the inside of the cover and it's a piece of masking tape on the inside here. If 
I can get that to line up right. So this just adds a little bit of mass to the uh, inside of the cover and dampens the vibration of the cover just a touch. So this this will this will make it a little less microphonic without having to uh, without have to worry about uh, it wax potting the coil, which will will affect the tone of the pickup. So that's one option, um, and that that actually does suppress a fair amount of uh, cover feedback squeal. And when I say cover feedback squeal, it's it's a high pitch squeal that. Uh, that sometimes happens at extreme high volume with usually with the guitar close to the amp and when that happens if you want to find out if that's what's going on if you press on the cover when that's when when there's squeal like that and the squeal goes away or you can change the pitch of the squeal it's cover feedback so that's one way to approach it the other and probably most effective way to do it is to put three drops of silicone RTV here on the slug coil. I put one little tiny drop here, here, and here before the cover goes on. And what that does is that couples the surface of the cover to the surface of the slug coil. There's a, several ways to handle this one as well. Um, you can apply the the silicone directly to the bobbin, which is my preference. Although when I do this, I put a small amount of um, of uh, paste wax on the bobbin here, just to allow you to remove the uh, silicone if you ever want the cover off and just peel right off because you've got a little bit of wax on that. Um, the other way to do it would be to put a piece of tape on the bobbin, protecting the coil from the silicone. The potential problem with that is um, the adhesive and masking tape, when it dries out, is it's practically like varnish. <laughs> so uh, you may run into down the road problems with uh, residue from the tape on your bobbins. So I, I prefer this way of doing it. So. I'll show you how much silicone I'm talking about too. We're talking about the very smallest amount of silicone on here because we're gonna, the cover itself is going to flatten this bit of silicone out. And this, this is even maybe more than I want. Okay, so we've just got three tiny, teeny tiny little dabs on there. And once we've got that, the cover can go on. Let me show you two, one detail. Now that we're ready to go with putting the cover on, there's another thing you want to do, and this depends upon your pickup. There may be, may or may not be some residue of solder here. If there is, smooth it out. Let gravity kind of let the solder flow downhill but you don't you want to have a nice surface there so just kind of hitting that with a soldering iron before you put the cover on is good if you're putting a cover that you've already installed on to do the same here I don't know if you're going to see this but just got a smooth surface to work with if it's if it's at all jagged from from when it came off before. All right, so this is an opportunity here. I thought of a detail we need to address. I've put the cover on here and I'm reusing the cover, existing cover for this demonstration, but um, depending upon what uh, pickup you're doing this with, there may be outward bow here to the cover. Ideally, you want the sides of the cover here to draw closely against the sides of the base plate to get the best solder connection. This is sticking out a little bit because we have solder that will reflow once I heat this up. 
but throwback covers are quite straight and don't have any outward bow here uh, when we're making a new pickup or if you're using one of our aftermarket covers. If you have a cover where there is outward bow, rather than clamping it to draw it close to the cover with a clamp like this, the better approach, I think, is to take the cover, push it inward so you can get just a touch of inward bow here. And that way you'll have, a, once the cover goes on, you'll have a nice flush surface between the cover and the base plate. And you won't need to worry about the spring of this cover that was clamped potentially fracturing the joint, solder joint in the future. And I've seen this. Depending upon how much spring there is in that cover, if you clamp it with a clamp, it will draw that joint together, but in the future, that outward spring is still there on the cover, and that can make the, the solder joint crack over time, and you don't want that. So that's, that's something you want to do. If you can do that with our covers, because it, and I think I think most covers you can do this with, but ours are annealed when they're drawn, and that allows it to the metal to have enough give in it that you can do that. All right, so we've got the cover on with silicone. Again, silicone's absolutely optional, but for the sake of this demonstration, I thought I'd show you. Oh, also, so. I use this jig to tighten it. I should show you what some of the other possibilities are. Uh, if you are to do this, if you are to, to clamp it without a jig, you can use a uh, spring clamp of some sort. Protect the face of the, the pickup. And also make sure that you're missing the pole screws here because the pole screws may be protruding a little bit. So when you clamp it, you're going to want to clamp beyond that and clamp it also so you're not going to run into the solder joint. But any sort of small clamp can apply some pressure on that. You just want to make sure to protect the face of your pickup before you try anything like that. And then again, you do that before the solder joints are reflowed, or in the case of a new cover, uh, before you apply new solder to it. Um, when we're going to ref we're going to solder the cover on, and the way I like to do it here, I have, I've made a jig to put some downward pressure here on the back of the cover or back of the base plate, so that there's no air gap between the top of the cover and the inside of the bobbins. Any air gap in there is a potential for cover feedback. So let's get some solder. And again, since these are fairly tight fitting, there isn't really any need to clamp the sides of it. And if you do feel the need to clamp the sides, Try that bending method first because that's really the way to address any potential problem rather than clamping it. The advantage of the razor blade method is too, you don't really need to add as much solder. You can just reflow the solder that's on there and add a little bit to get a good joint. So it's cool. You've got your pickup solder back on or pickup cover. Okay, I hope that was helpful, the switching of the cover and the magnet in a PAF style pickup. This is uh, one of those modifications that some people want to do. It's not strictly necessary for your pickups. Um, it really comes to fine tuning pickups uh, for people who like to experiment. 
and the cover is more of a cosmetic issue. Uh, some tonal um, impact with this as well, but uh, if you're going to do it, you do want to make sure you do it correctly because although it's not real likely, if you but if you that it will mess your pickup, if, if you do it wrong, you'll be in trouble. So, so I hope all that information was helpful about changing these two items. So you don't have to do them together, obviously. You could do just the cover, you could do just the magnet. Or honestly, I, I think most people don't end up messing with these. But again, for the truly adventurous, you want to know how to do it right. So anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, click like. If you have questions or comments, tips of your own, I'd love to hear those. Please put that in the comments section below. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, uh, click subscribe, click the bell. You'll get notifications of future videos, and there will be more. And once again, thanks for letting Throwback be part of your search for great guitar tone. <laughs>